All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's talk about this endoplasmic reticulum, this really big membrane inside the cell that connects the nucleus to the outer membrane of the cell and looks like a folded up bed sheet, if you ask me. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There is the smooth and there is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the only difference besides their function, what they actually do, the only difference between them is the fact that on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, you're going to find those ribosomes, those organelles that are made inside the nucleolus, shipped out through the nuclear pore and into the cell. Ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum make that part of the endoplasmic reticulum the rough ER. And the lack of ribosomes on an endoplasmic reticulum makes that the smooth ER. And you can actually see that in this photo. These little dots on here are ribosomes indicating this is the rough ER. And we don't see any of those little dots over here indicating this is the smooth ER. So I said everything is the same about them except uh, their presence of ribosomes and their function. So what does the smooth ER do that the rough ER can't and vice versa? And again, just for uh, context purposes, so you know where we're at, this opening here is the nucleus. All right, that's the nucleus, and this is the ER attached to it. So the smooth ER has no ribosomes, and the function of that smooth ER is to make lipids. The smooth ER makes the lipids that are going to fix and maintain the cell's membrane. Remember that that. Uh, macromolecule known as a lipid that is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like water and the cells surround it in this barrier so that it itself doesn't dissolve in water. So the smooth ER makes lipids that will be used in the cell membrane. The rough ER does have ribosomes attached to it. That's why we call it the rough ER. And this type of ER is involved in making, you guessed it, because ribosomes uh, carry out protein synthesis, the rough ER's entire function is to make proteins, okay? Because it has these ribosomes all over it. And newly made proteins that are made on the rough ER by the ribosomes attached to the rough ER, these proteins are either inserted directly into the ER to fix and repair or carry out a function, or they're sent off somewhere else into the cell to continue their journey and carry whatever function they're going to. Now, speaking of sent off into the cell, we have another organelle. Just outside the ER, which is attached to the nucleus, we have little organelles called Golgi apparati, or apparatus. Proteins that were actually made on the rough ER, if they're not used at the rough ER, are actually sent out and they end up at the Golgi apparatus first. So what does the Golgi apparatus do? Well, first off, it kind of looks like the ER, it looks like folded up bed sheets, but it's much, much, much smaller. The function of the Golgi is to modify, sort, and package those proteins. The Golgi is like the UPS of the cell. It receives the protein package and it modifies, sorts it, says this goes here, this goes there, and gets it ready to be sent off and for that protein to carry out its function. These proteins are either going to be stored in the cell for some kind of function inside the cell, or they'll actually be secreted from one cell and go carry out a function somewhere else in the organism at some other cell. Basically, you can think of the Golgi as like, this is where the finishing touches get put on these proteins before they reach their final destination. Just like UPS takes the final step between your package coming from the seller to you. Oh, the lysosome. This is another organelle all its own. The lysosome is pretty simple. Lysosomes are actually filled. They're little sacs inside the cell, and we can see that right here. Uh, this dark spot here, this dark spot here. These little sacs, they almost look like air bubbles, kind of like we saw in our, uh, our cell slides that we made last week. Um, 
they're very small, much smaller than the Golgi apparatus, much smaller than the ER, much smaller than the nucleus, and they're actually filled with very strong digestive enzymes. Very strong enzymes that speed up chemical reactions to break down other molecules. So the one function of the lysosomes is the digestion of macromolecules and other small molecules. So the lysosome goes around, breaks down some small carbohydrates, breaks down uh, maybe some components of proteins like amino acids, and it breaks down some components of lipids. Okay, remember, carbs, proteins, and lipids are typically too large to get through the cell by themselves, so they need a little help getting across the membrane. And once they get into the cell, how is your body going to get the chemical energy from them? The lysosome is the stomach of the cell and digests those macromolecules and some other small molecules in the cytoplasm. This all happens in the cytoplasm. As soon as we stop talking about the nucleus and nucleolus and got to the ER, we're outside the nucleus now. We're in the cytoplasm of the cell. So basically, Lysosomes are the digestive system, the stomach of the cell. But they also, because they have these very strong digestive enzymes, are responsible for destroying old organelles that don't work anymore uh, and are just kind of a hindrance. They'll break those down and reuse the chemicals that comprise those old organelles to build new organelles or build new proteins in the cell to do other functions. Cells like one big conveyor belt of recycling, and the lysosome is what allows this conveyor belt to function. Now, lysosomes can also help clean up or destroy any debris that might build up in this cell, any waste that's building up in the cell that the cell has yet to excrete or it can't get that waste out. <clears throat> lysosomes are surrounded by a very thick membrane, and the reason they have to be surrounded by this thick membrane is solely because of the strength of those digestive enzymes. If those digestive enzymes were to get out of the lysosome, we could have some real problems for that cell, and that cell will most likely die. And we can see here, uh, the cell is taking in some food into this little food vacuole, this little food pouch. The lysosome is gonna fuse with it. This stuff in here is likely proteins, lipids, or carbs, and the lysosome is going to digest it, just like your stomach. See you in the next one, folks.